Hello and welcome to Just One More Watch. As 2019 hurtles towards its inevitable conclusion, perhaps that's a bit of an exaggeration, it's only the first week in September, I've begun to take stock of my watch collection as it stands and to consider how many of my stated aims and aspirations for 2019 I have achieved so far, in terms of watches anyway. If you watched my State of the Collection video that I recorded back in December last year, I'll pop a link to it just up there. At the end of that video, I said I had three main aims and aspirations for my watch collecting, for my collection, for 2019. The first of those was to buy a JDM Seiko, and that is certainly one box that I can tick. First of all, I picked up the Seiko Sarks 043, then I picked up a Saab 033, and I can attest to the quality of both of those watches. The second stated aim was that I was keen to pick up a Nomos Club Campus 38mm. Now, that one, the most expensive of the aims, hasn't quite happened yet. Perhaps it will happen before the end of the year. Perhaps it won't happen before the end of the year. We'll see how that goes. Now, the third of those aims was to pick up a premium digital watch. I love my Casio watches. I've got dozens of the things in the house at the moment, but I fancied something that was digital, had a digital readout, but was a little bit more upscale, made of stainless steel rather than just coated plastic. Something with a better bracelet that didn't take all your arm hair off, for example. Now, I quoted two different watches in that video that I was interested in. The first was the Gerlach Cosmonauta unashamedly retro remake of a watch worn by a Polish cosmonaut in space in the early 1970s. It features a red LED dial and is a little bit special in my opinion. The second watch that I mentioned was one by Braun. Now I had done my research on the Braun, it was a watch that I had been interested in for a while. Not long after I made the video, a subscriber called Brian got in touch with me. He sent me a message saying that the Braun was available for Amazon.co.uk at a great price. I should snag it, and I did. And today is the second time that I've worn this watch in eight and a half months. What went wrong? Well, I'm going to talk about that today. I've got an idea of why I've rejected this watch, but I haven't done anything about it. I haven't taken any steps towards rectifying the problem that I see and kind of bonding with the watch. It just hasn't happened. So I want to hear from you today. Has this happened to you? Have you researched a watch? Have you decided that this was the one for you? You pulled the trigger, you bought it, and something just hasn't worked. And if so, what do you do? Do you take a hit? Do you put it straight on eBay? Are you sneaky? Do you take it back to the shop, claiming that you've never put it on? I tell you what you probably shouldn't do. You probably shouldn't do what I did, which was put it in the corner of my watch box and let it intimidate me every time I picked a different watch than it for about six months or so. So what happened then, Jody? Why did you reject the brawn? Let's flip the camera and find out. All right, I will give this one the full review treatment today, albeit briefly, then get to the bottom of why I just have not settled with it. I'm sure a number of you are thinking, Jody, why the f*** did you buy that thing in the first place? And I don't necessarily blame you. It is uh, an acquired taste, shall we say, this one, and perhaps a taste that I have not yet acquired. Now, Braun, now Brown, I, I get it. If you're a German speaker, it's Brown, it's not Braun. But they were always sold and marketed, the razors, etc., as Braun in the UK. And I'm afraid old habits die hard. And there it is. Specifically, it is a BN0106SLBTG, the all stainless steel model with this stainless steel bracelet and I'll give you a heads up I think that's the biggest problem this watch has so it is just under 37 millimeters in diameter 42 mil in length weighs one centimeter thick so 10 mil thick 24 millimeter lug width you can see there's a quite a quick taper down from 24 to 22 all the way down to a butterfly clasp on this one and sized up for me on my whoops, seven inch wrist this weighs in at a not inconsiderable 162 grams so right there in that stainless steel sports watch sweet spot though this is not your typical stainless steel sports watch though that's what it's made of stainless steel bracelet stainless steel case and pushers on the side now that glass is a k1 hardened mineral crystal obviously you know my preference is for sapphire but they make this one with k1 there's an easy way not to scratch a watch and that is not to wear a watch and that's the method of not scratching this one that i have chosen to employ since i bought it in december 
So that's the basics then, 30 meters of water resistance, and this one is made in Germany, it should be noted. What does it do? Well, this features a Ven 10.1 module, digital module. Now, the Ven is for Ventura. They are another German company that makes a range of these kind of premium stainless steel, quite odd looking digital watches. So all of the functionality of the watch is controlled by a little scroll wheel here, what they call an easy scroll system with a K. So the button for the light, one button, kind of roller plus push, that's all. Minimalist, not exactly intuitive. You do work out what's going on after a while, but you know you suspect they'd be better off putting a few more buttons, but hey, that would go against the whole Bauhaus minimal design look that this thing has clearly gone for. So the regular setting, the one that you would normally live with on a daily basis is the time here and the, the month and the date of the month here. With that engaged, the scroll wheel doesn't do anything. If you press it in once, you can flick it onto a, a seconds count up. You can then start rolling the scroll wheel to go through the menus. If I flick it up here, this is a countdown timer. So it's a short push to engage. That's your kind of start stop and a long push, much longer push will go into the set mode. If I let that go, I can then set the countdown timer to one hour, uh, one hour and no minutes. And if I start, press it once more, it'll start counting down. One press to stop rolling away from me again it'll bring up a stopwatch this one is much easier to operate start stop and then hold to reset next pusher goes into an alarm again hold it down to set much like the count up timer countdown timer so alarm on there set the time next adjustment da -da -da. and that's the alarm set Scroll once more and I've got a kind of dual time. You can have two time zones on here operated at the touch of a button. So this is my home time. One push of this goes into T2. Now, if I leave it on T2 and scroll up, my home time now becomes the T2 time. So to go back into that, I pull down, press the T1, roll up, and my home time is back into that with the tick in seconds, back to the month and date, and there we are. That's the kind of standard default. Now, K1 Mineral Crystal does pick up a lot of sticky fingerprints. So if you are interested in one of these, have a little cloth in your pocket at all times because you're going to need it. Once you've wiped those sticky fingerprints off the case and the crystal covering it, the case finishing is actually very nice. All brush case looks like it's made of one piece of stainless steel because it is made of one little billet of stainless steel and all machine from there. Quite pleasant, actually. The bracelet has a sort of different finish. Again, little stainless steel links, just push pins in these. I sized it up as I normally would. Kind of sandblasted finish on these ones. Braun logo etched there and a butterfly clasp that, as you saw earlier on, I haven't used all that often, so it's still pretty stiff. Case back contains the usual spec sheet. Now, I mentioned a light earlier on. It's an LCD screen with a single LED backlight operated by pressing that button on the right-hand side of the case. Nice kind of cool blue light emanating from the right hand side of the screen. It's not super strong, it's quite subtle, it's very much in keeping with the watch overall. And that's it on wrist. And I must admit, I do think that the head of the watch looks pretty cool. My problem is with the bracelet. I think it is grossly over braceleted in terms of weight. 160 grams for this type of watch. I know I wanted a solid feeling, premium feeling digital watch, but this one just feels too big and heavy and those links aren't particularly attractive, I don't think. It is somewhat ironic that the finish on the back of the links is actually much more attractive than the finish on the, the outer surface. These are brushed stainless steel. These actually match the watch head itself. They don't have that kind of bead blasted satinized finish. I'm not quite sure what's going on. I mean, there is a rubber strap version of this watch available, and if I had my time again, I would definitely opt for the rubber strap. I'm normally a metal bracelet guy, but this one just doesn't work for me. I don't think it works with the watch at all. Because it's a bit of a rare one, though, they're not exactly common. You can buy them from Brown, but they're really, really expensive, and I thought I would only be throwing good money at bad if I did buy the rubber strap that goes with it, and I didn't like it. I would have wasted more of my cash. I guess I could get a Barton silicone band or something like that and give this one another go, but I'm just not sure that it'd be worth it. So maybe it's not a case of the wrong watch. Maybe it's a case of the wrong strap choice. Maybe I just got that component of it wrong. Maybe I should have bought that Gerlach Cosmonauta in the first place. Who knows what I probably shouldn't have done, like I said in the intro, is let this one fester in my watch box for nearly nine months now, slowly running out of warranty as it does so. Silly boy Jody. I should probably just have stuck it on eBay and taken a loss. Indeed, that's probably what I'm going to do right now.
What would you have done? Leave me a comment. Let me know if you've had a, a similar experience when you thought you were buying the right watch and it turned out to be the wrong one. So there you have it. Be careful what you wish for because it's not always necessarily what's good for you. Like I said, I think perhaps if I had picked this one up on the rubber strap, I might have settled with it. I don't think this bracelet is anything that should feature on any watch at any price. It kind of goes with it aesthetically, but it just doesn't work for me. And it makes the watch heavy feeling and clunky. And that's not what this one should be about. I don't think. It certainly taught me a lesson. If I buy something in the future that I don't like, I'll get rid of it straight away. There's no point hanging onto it and letting the warranty expire like I've done with this. Not very sensible. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.